Welcome to this worship on this fifth Sunday of Lent. We are glad that you are tuning in with us. A few announcements, a reminder that we will have Holy Week worship here at St. James on Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. And there will be worship offered at Faith as well on Thursday and Friday, also at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. We also invite you to join us on Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. at Faith and at 11 a.m. here at St. James. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through the life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. A reading from the fifth chapter of Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. 
But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Called out to her daughter. Emily! 
Sally, Anne, what in the world is this? Get up here. Little seven-year-old Emily came running. Oh, Mom. Oh, that was my apple. Your what? My apple, the one I, I received at school when we did Johnny Appleseed Fest. I was saving it. Jen sighed and sat down on the bed to explain to Emily about these things. Oh, honey, we can't save apples like this. Apples are fruit. Apples don't last. What do you mean they don't last? Jen explained, you know when we're at the park and we bring up lunch and you always leave your apple slices so that you have something to finish on the way home, but when you come back, they're all brown? That's, that's the apple starting to break down. It's the apple slowly dying. Emily's eyes grew wide. Dying? You mean like great grandma? Jen went on. Well, kind of. I mean, nobody lives forever, but, but apples and other fruit, well, they just live a much, much shorter life than people or pets or things like that. That's the whole purpose of the apple. It, it grows to make more apples. Emily questioned, more apples? You mean like, like Johnny Appleseed talked about, planting trees? Jen went on, yes, exactly like that. Inside each apple are those seeds, and, and the outside of that apple, the, the fruit, the flesh part, grows to nourish those seeds. But eventually that outer part has to die away so that those seeds inside of it can fall to the ground so that they can be planted somewhere else. So more trees can grow and so that more apples can grow on those trees. Emily, Emily asked, so the apple dies but really it lives on, right? I mean, in the trees and the apples that grow from that one apple? That's, that's kind of what we learned with Johnny Appleseed. Exactly, honey. So, so we can't keep those things. But maybe if we clean out this mess that's in your drawer, the seeds might still be there and maybe Maybe we could grow a whole bunch of trees. Right. Wouldn't that be better? Yeah, let's go do that. Apples and seeds dying and rising. In our gospel today, Jesus talks about this normal cycle of life with his disciples. About grain or fruit about the seeds in them dying and rising just like that. Jesus tells us that truth that we all know so very well. That fruit, that grain grows for one purpose, to bear more fruit, to provide that fleshy, soft, abundant nourishment around the seeds that it carries, and then to give up itself to fall to the ground, to die, and in doing so, to give new life. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. It's one of those places when science and religion are not in competition. It is a fact. A new plant cannot grow unless that seed germinates unless the seed ceases to be a seed anymore, unless the cells within it divide and what has once been no longer exists. Unless it dies, there will be no new life. 
Jesus uses this metaphor to teach this reality of what he is about to experience. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth, unless the Son of God dies, there will be no new life for our world. Without the incarnation, without the Spirit creating Jesus in his mother's womb, without the birth from Mary, without Jesus living and breathing and being among this world, and then like that seed, without his death, without him giving up himself, new life cannot come. Jesus, like that grain of wheat, came into our world ultimately to die, and in doing so, to bring new life. That's what he's explaining in this story this morning. That's, that's how we hear these words, what he speaks to Philip and Andrew and to all those who followed him. Jesus came to die. Jesus is that single grain who will fall to the earth and who will bear much fruit. And yet this gospel story, his words, are not only about his life and death. This metaphor, this word of Christ, also speaks to our lives. For we also are created with that purpose, that purpose like the apple. For all of us in this world, we also are created to bear fruit, to plant those seeds long after we are gone. We also are to pass on what we've been given, what we've learned, what we know, what we believe, what we've experienced. We bear fruit with our daily lives, fruit that bears the grace and mercy and love of Jesus. That love that caused Jesus to be born, to live, to die, and to rise again. We are sent into this world to, to bear this fruit, to give of ourselves, to plant, and to let new life grow. But Jesus isn't saying that in order to bear fruit and to give more life, that we, should, that we should die. When he talks about giving up ourselves and being like that single grain, willing to live on for others, Jesus isn't telling the disciples around him and all of us today to go out and end our lives. He's not saying go out and get hit by a bus or to just lay in your bed forever until death comes. No, Jesus is talking about our daily lives. Jesus is pointing to that daily death that comes to the sin in our life, to that daily death, to all that draws us away from God. He's pointing us to the new life that comes when we live in God's ways, when we give of ourselves and we bear that fruit, when we live among God's covenant and we live deeply into those promises that God makes with us. That daily death to our sin and that life that starts by those words that Jesus spoke. That daily death that says, I'm going to put God's will above my own. Daily death and new life that says, God first. Daily death and life that proclaims, to God be the glory. Daily death and life that proclaims, I cannot do this on my own. But with God, I can do all things. Daily death and life that remembers what we heard in that psalm this morning. That I am but a sinner. But God, God is merciful and everlasting. And the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Daily death and new life that trusts that God has written God's word on our hearts, that God has promised that God will be our God and we will be God's people. That's the death and the new life of which Jesus speaks. 
That's the death and new life into which Jesus invites us. That's the death and the new life that truly brings life, not just to ourselves, but to those for whom we plant the seeds of faith, those who come long after us. That daily death that for some of us began in the waters of baptism as we were drowned to sin and raised to new life in Christ, but for some is still being explored. For all of us, it is that new life that we are invited into day after day as we are drawn back to God, as we are brought into that love of God in God's kingdom, as we are given those promises from the one who gives us life. That's what we live in these days. That's what Jesus is trying to help us realize and remember. That unless that grain of wheat falls into the earth, it remains just a single grain. When it dies, it bears much fruit. I think of those who have planted seeds of faith in these congregations, in our lives, those who have gone before us but have left a legacy of example, a legacy of a life lived in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who planted seeds of faith in us and in those around us, and I think about those seeds of faith that we ourselves plant in those who are yet to come, in those in our life who carry on that legacy of the love and grace of Jesus Christ. It is those seeds planted in us, those seeds that we plant in others, those that we share. That is what we rejoice in today. And that promise, and that gift of new life that comes through Jesus Christ, and in that new life that lives on now through each and every one of us. For when we give of ourselves, when we share that love of God with others, that fruit is born again, and that fruit is shared with those who come after. God has planted seeds of faith in our lives, seeds that we now willingly give up for others, that they might know the same love of God, that they might know the love of the one who died and rose again for each of us. We all bear these seeds of faith. And just think, if God can do these amazing things through an apple, through other fruit, through a stalk of wheat. Just imagine what God can bear through each and every one of us, through the life that lives on in us.
Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. Loving God, you wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Almighty God, you fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you promise to write your law on our hearts. Guide citizens throughout the world to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace. And give them creativity to work for the welfare of all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Rejoice, restore the joy of all who need to know your presence. Those who are lonely or feel unforgivable. Those who need healing of mind or body. Those who are dying and all who grieve. We especially pray for Larry, Laura, Mary, Vicki, Mary, Jeannie, Shirley, Millie and Sherry, Kevin, Anna, Colleen, Jean, Twyla, Pat, and Carol Eberly. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom, and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you. With all those who have died in Christ, bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among us.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless our feast. Grace our tables with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Trust in this gift of Jesus given for you wherever you may be. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.